Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, welcome to this session. Uh, the objective of this session uh, is to discuss the independence of central banks. And in this uh, session, uh, more specifically, uh, we will discuss what are the case for independence and what are the case against independence. And after that, uh, we will uh, review the independence of some of the uh, well-known banks uh, across the globe. So, coming to the independence of central bank, uh, there are various dimensions of uh, independence of central bank. Uh, one is goal independence. So, the goal independence means it encompasses those institutional characteristics that insulate the central bank from political influence uh, in defining its monetary policy objectives that is one for example the goals for example price stability interest rate stability and at the same time that the growth in gdp employment level foreign exchange stability etc so this in, in setting this goal whether uh, or prioritizing for example inflation over economic growth or economic growth over inflation so uh, whether the central banks having this goal independence that is one dimension and another dimension is selecting the instrument the instrument independence that is the ability it refers uh, to the ability of the central bank to freely implement policy instruments in its pursuit to meet its monetary policy goals so among the poli uh, monetary policy tools for example open market operation uh, between open market operations and the discount window whether they can apply the tools as per the wish of the central bank or not for example discount window if they reduce the uh, discount rate you know that uh, the banks uh, banks can borrow more and the liquidity of the banking system will increase and at the same time it also uh, increase the liquidity in the economy money supply in the economy will increase so similarly another tool for example uh, cash reserve ratio re increasing the reserve requirement or reducing the reserve requirement is not only affect the liquidity in the bank it also affects the profitability or the investment opportunities of the banking system. For example, uh, increasing the reserve requirement, you know that the money with the banking system will come down. That, that means the net income, the income that is available out of the total deposits, the amount, the fund available with the banking system will come down. That means they have to keep, for example, from 10 percentage, what if they increase it into from 10 to 15 percent then that means of the total uh, liabilities uh, demand and uh, time liabilities then that means the fund available with the banking system to make investment in for example giving loans or investing in securities will come down and then that will affect the profitability of the banking system as a whole which has further implication about the entire financial system and also overall uh, economic growth as well. So that means choosing between these goals, for example, open market operations or and discount rate and uh, cash reserve requirement plus so many other uh, qualitative tools. Whether do, do the central bank have the freedom, do they have the freedom to choose which tools to use? That is another dimension. Then the further dimension, these are the two key dimensions. In addition, uh, there are other dimensions, other measures of independence of central banks that is one is called uh, functional and operational independence so to achieve its mandate the central bank the, it refers to that the central bank whether the central bank has the authority to run its own operation that means without depending on the government whether it can appoint its own staff it can appoint staff setting budgets and so on uh, by its own without relying on the government and to organize its internal structures uh, without excessive involvement of government. 
And the fourth one is coming to is called the financial independence. So here central bank enjoying financial independence, the, the, those banks will have uh, full autonomy on their budget and some are even prohibited from financing uh, governments. So this meant to remove incentive from politicians to influence central bank. That means uh, central bank is having complete uh, full financial independence uh, that means full autonomy on their budget. The fifth one is called the legal independence that means some central banks have their own legal personality which allows them to ratify international agreements without the government's approval. For example, European Central Bank and they, they can also to go to the court. For example, the example here is uh, European Central Bank. So that means they, they enjoy uh, legal independence. So this also the important is that if all these key dimensions, if they enjoy independence in all these dimensions, then you can say that the central bank is fully independent and the monetary policy that they are uh, designing, designing and implementing, uh, it will be fully uh, decided by, uh, fully decided by or it is uh, independent from the government. Uh, it is independent from the government. So these are the dimensions and there are some uh, arguments for case for independence and case against uh, independence. So the strongest case for independence is that the strongest argument for an independent central bank rests on the view that subjecting it to more political pressures would impart an inflationary bias to monetary policy. So that means political pressure would impart an inflationary bias to monetary policy that is the key arguments um, of a key case for independence. You know uh, there is uh, the concept called business cycle so especially before and after the election. So especially during the election time you know that mostly suppose if the central bank is uh, not independent is uh, more related to the that means the central bank is under the control of the government then you can see that especially during the election time uh, what is the objective function of the politician especially you know that uh, they want to uh, when they want to gain uh, uh, score more votes uh, so you know that in order to win the election they will be uh, following more populist policies maybe they, they will be do especially at the time of election uh, they prefer to have an expansionary monetary policy. That means expansionary monetary policy means low interest rate. Low interest rate means for the firms, you know that the low f the firms will be happy with a low interest rate because the cost of borrowing will come down then the employment opportunity. They will uh, borrow more from the markets and they will engage more in economic activity that means uh, production of goods and services uh, which would lead to uh, high employment and high GDP. Right. So similarly low interest rates for uh, consumers, uh, somebody is taking mortgage loan or uh, taking other consumer loans, durable, durable consumer loans and all this will benefit, uh, all this will trend a positive uh, signal in the economy that means the economic activity will increase. So however you know that, um, that is one that the low interest rate they will be preferring. Uh, that is one. Then another thing is that during uh, election times governments will be interested to they will be they will be following an expansionary uh, fiscal policy that means more government expenditure and more government expenditure especially in the social sector to more populist fiscal policy they will be uh, following at that time increasing government expenditure at that same time cutting government taxes right so then uh, in order to finance the, this uh, fiscal policy, uh, fiscal expenditure, uh, government will be monetizing the budget deficit. Suppose uh, if the central bank is under the control un under the control of the government, you can see that during election time there will be expansionary fiscal policy and this expansionary fiscal policy, the finance required, to f uh, required for this fiscal policy will be uh, raised through. Uh, printing more currencies, injecting more money in the uh, economy that means monetizing the budget deficit, monetizing uh, the budget deficit by printing um, more currency 
uh, or borrowing more from the market. So that means uh, it will be there will be uh, monetizing this budget deficit then leading to low rate of interest. So at the time of uh, election what you can see that uh, it will lead to low interest rate but afterwards uh, you know that when the liquidity in the economy increase when the liquidity increase that means when they are injecting the increase in the liquidity that means high money supply in the economy high money supply eventually it will lead to inflation. So then you see uh, when the uh, there is an inflation in the economy uh, that means it also just had the Fisher effect that means uh, when inflation is increasing the nominal rate of interest also will increase right because uh, the demand is uh, in the market uh, the demand is uh, uh, the, the de investors in the finance market those who lend their money in the finance market they are looking at the real interest rate. So when the inflation increases then the nominal rate of interest has to be increased. So what we can see normally it has been observed that there is political business cycle that means uh, during uh, election time there the economic activity due to expansionary fiscal and monetary policy the economic activity will uh, increase but uh, the after effect the adverse effect for example increase in inflation which would eventually lead to hyperinflation and also leading to high interest rate uh, this would happen uh, due to the political business cycle and the case for independence those who argue for independence of the uh, central bank state that they say they state that uh, if we give uh, if you give, give reduce the independence of the central bank there is high probability for high possibility for uh, political business cycle so because of that uh, it is better to give more independence to the central bank in order to avoid a uh, political business cycle. So here again is the point I just mentioned here I am just showing here in the slide that means treasury financing through large budget deficit that the accommodative monetary policy uh, that also would lead to political business cycle. So another point related point is is too important to leave to politicians that means the principal agent problem is worse for politicians actually politicians uh, especially many arguments uh, those who argue for uh, the advocates of uh, independence for central bank they believe that a politician they are short sighted uh, they are actually their time span is actually nearly 5 years or maximum 10 years but uh, then actually all their policy that they the fiscal policy and accordingly using monetary policy in their adva advantage uh, will be looking at a short time period uh, which will not be at the best interest of the economy. So the principal agent problem is worse for politicians. So that is the case uh, for independence. Uh, then another thing is against independence is that the proponents of Fed under the control of the President or Congress argue that it is undemocratic to have monetary policy controlled by an elite group that is responsible to no one. Here the main argument is that against independence of the central bank is that macroeconomic stability can be best achieved. Uh, if monetary policy is properly coordinated with the fiscal policy. Because the two major forms of economic policy in a domestic economy uh, that one, one is uh, monetary policy, the other one is fiscal policy. So the those who uh, argue against independence uh, says that uh, macroeconomic stability can be best achieved if monetary policy is properly coordinated with fiscal policy. Since government is responsible for the macroeconomic performance of the country, the opponents of independence argue that uh, it must have some degree of control over the uh, monetary policy. The opponents also argue that central banks are not necessarily immune from uh, political pressure. So here uh, let us uh, see the theory of bureaucratic behavior also affects. So before that so the main point is that this is undemocratic uh, and another point is that actually uh, the elite group especially the authority monetary authority they are not democratically elected people uh, they are not 
accountable they are unaccountable to the general public and plus some more points which i we just discuss um, uh, difficult to coordinate fiscal and monetary policy uh, if the central bank is independent actually to attain the long term goals of the economy that the economic growth uh, money uh, in, uh, inflation st price stability employment foreign exchange rate stability etc both fiscal and monetary policy should go together uh, however if it is independent uh, it's difficult to coordinate fiscal and monetary policy you know fiscal policy is mainly by the central government uh, monetary by the monetary policies by the uh, central bank so uh, examples also empirical evidences also uh, the proponents uh, against uh, the people against independence argue that has not used it independence successfully. One of the theory uh, explaining the behavior of the uh, central bank is the government bureaucratic behavior. Uh, that means the bureaucrats serve uh, the public interest. That is the public interest view. So one view they say that okay they serve, serve the purpose, uh, they serve the interest of the public interest. However, uh, some economists have developed a theory of bureaucratic behavior that suggests that other factors that influence how bureaucracies operate. So the theory of bureaucracy behavior may be a useful gate to predicting what motivates the Fed and other central banks uh, in its operation. So the theory of bureaucratic behavior uh, states that the objective of uh, the bureaucrats uh, is to maximize its own welfare which is related to power and prestige. That means officials of the uh, central bank who can be called as also called as the bureaucratic as per this framework, their objective as according to this theory is that to maximize their own welfare which is related to power and prestige. So they fight uh, vigorously to preserve their autonomy. Uh, they also uh, avoid conflict with more powerful groups uh, in the economy. So in this case, uh, what is happening is that uh, according to this theory, it suggests that the objective of the uh, bureaucracy is to maximize its own welfare uh, akin to consumers behavior that aims at maximizing personal welfare. So that means the central bank can pursue a course of narrow self-interest to increase its power and prestige at the interest of at the interest uh, at the expense of public interest so looking at this clearly the based on this theory uh, it is argued that is better not to give uh, more uh, independence for the central bank uh, because bureaucrats will try to uh, maximize their own uh, welfare uh, however uh, some uh, economists they uh, do not uh, rule out altruism though people do charity for feel good this also result in some good in society. So the when it comes to the degree of the independence whether independence the central bank independence whether it is good for the economy or not there are lots of research has been happening on this area. Uh, one research it shows that uh, especially with the related to the goal of price stability or inflation. Uh, inflation um, look at this diagram uh, that is the level of degree of independence that is measured on the x-axis on the x-axis here that means our uh, rankings from least independent from that zero from here to here uh, more independent so you can see that uh, more the when the degree of independence increase those countries with high degree of independence they are having uh, less inflation. So you can see that uh, when we are moving to uh, the rightward axis, uh, you can see that uh, uh, these countries uh, they are having uh, less inflation. When we move uh, to less uh, degree that the degree of independence come down, then you can see that the inflation is very high. This is one indicator. Uh, some more studies have been uh, have happened. There are several studies. One study in uh, looking at the central bank's independence and macroeconomic performance by Alessina and Summers, uh, their main point they uh, examine the degree of uh, central bank 
uh, degree of uh, central bank independence which varies considerably across countries according to their study as per their estimates. Uh, several authors what they argue uh, they, they took uh, several authors uh, studies uh, they reviewed and say that uh, found that more independent central banks are associated with the lower levels of uh, inflation. So, what we have seen previous in the previous figure that means uh, more, in, more independent the central banks are then that means it is associated with the lower levels of uh, inflation. Because we normally from a consumer perspective and also po policy perspective a mild inflation is better for the country, uh, bit better for the economy. So, that means uh, more independent the central bank is uh, there is uh, low levels of uh, inflation. However, um, the relationship between central bank independence and the level of variability in real economic variables such as growth, unemployment and real interest uh, that is less investigated and this study this uh, or the study they argue that they found that their conclusion is that while central bank independence promotes uh, price stability however it has no measurable impact on real economic performance that means real economic variables such as economic growth uh, unemployment rate and real interest rate uh, this study they could not find uh, a clear cut impact. However, most of the study they agree that uh, central bank independence has a very clear cut uh, predictable impact uh, on price stability. Let us now review the independence of some select uh, central bank across the globe. First of all about the Fed, how independent uh, is Fed? So, you can see that uh, you might have already got the clear idea in the previous sessions. Uh, we can say that um, when it comes to monetary policy instruments such as selecting open market operation, discount rate and uh, reserve requirements as well as the interest rate on reserve requirements, uh, the Fed, Fed reserve system enjoy full autonomy. Uh, similarly, goal independence looking at whether the goal is uh, inflation. Uh, infl price stability or economic growth, uh, there also uh, the Fed enjoys uh, full uh, autonomy that means it is not subject to approval by go for federal uh, government. So, overall in, in addition to that you can also see that uh, the Fed is having uh, independent revenue as well. However, you can see that the Fed structure is written by the Congress and is subject to change at any time and in also you can see that there is presidential influence that the influence on Congress and that means appointing members and appointing chairman uh, although the terms are not concurrent with the presidents, president. So, the important point here is that the key bodies uh, within the Federal Reserve System are the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve and the FOMC that the Federal Open Market Committee and that we have discussed in the previous classes that that is the Board of Governors is composed of 7 governors appointed by the President of the United States. So, in that way you can say that ok the government intervention is there. However, uh, an important feature of the Federal Reserve structure is that in particular of that of FOMC. Uh, is the considerable degree of independence given to the monetary policy making authority. The 14 year term for which governors are appointed and the fact that they cannot be reappointed provide insulation from the political process. So, one more thing the chairman of the board of governor is appointed for a 4 year term, the chairman of the board of governor is appointed for a 4 year term, but this term is not concurrent with that of the president of the United States. So, therefore, an incoming president does not immediately get to appoint his choice of chairman nor can he dismiss them if he disagrees with their policy actions. So, similarly the other members of the FOMC, the regional bank presidents are appointed by the directors of the regional banks uh, with the approval of the board of governors. So, what we can see that uh, overall uh, we can see that there is a trend towards uh, greater independence across the globe uh, for many central banks because of the high correlation between macroeconomic stability and independent central banks has led to remarkable trend to further enhance the independence of central banks across the world. Uh, many of the drawbacks that we have discussed it has already been most of them have been tackled and in order to ensure that 
uh, central banks do not uh, deviate from the overall socio-economic goals of the nation, most central banks have been made accountable to their parliaments and are required to become more transparent about their operations by publishing minutes of their decisive meetings and community communicating their policies to the public. So you can see this one in India as well, uh, India's monetary policy, whenever uh, Indian monetary policy committee meets, they are also mandated to publish the minutes of the meeting as well and also uh, asked to state uh, the reason for why they vote for and uh, why they vote against the, major, the, the decisions. So, the Federal Reserve uh, has historically been more independent than almost all the other central bank. Um, so, we can see that other central banks, for example, the European Central Bank is uh, one of the most uh, independent uh, central banking system in the world, most independent uh, in the world. So, about the European Central Bank, uh, there are uh, 19 national central banks of the euro area. They are also considered as one of the, uh, these banks, uh, European Central Bank is also considered as uh, one of the most independent in the world. So, about uh, other banks, banks of Canada, uh, they essentially control the monetary policy, uh, they have control over the tools as well as the goals of monetary policy. In addition, uh, Bank of England, they have uh, really more, more and more uh, independence, uh, they enjoy uh, high level of uh, independence. Uh, Bank of Japan also recently gained more independence. So, what we can see that recently uh, more central banks that have been traditionally subject to intervention of finance ministries, for example, Bank of England and Bank of Japan, they have been granted more independence since the 90s. Uh, so, uh, about People's Bank of China, though they enjoyed a little bit a degree of independence, however, it comes under directly under the government. And coming to India, uh, you know that uh, Reserve Bank of India is not a not a constitutional body, uh, it is only a statutory body. It was established through the Reserve Bank of India Act 1935. Although RBI has considerable institutional independence, it is under the control of Ministry of Finance that the government of India. So, we can see that uh, when it comes to the selection of the monetary policy instrument, we can see that uh, the Reserve Bank of India enjoys um, independence. But when it comes to the goals, uh, there have been uh, some uh, clashing points between the central government and uh, the Reserve Bank of India. These are the some newspaper cuttings, uh, clippings I am showing you just to show uh, there are some clash points between government. Uh, and the Reserve Bank of India. One of the thing is the interest rate, uh, especially government at the central over time we have seen that um, especially during election time or crisis time they have been asking for uh, reducing, uh, batting for reducing the rate of interest. However, uh, Reserve Bank of India often resist because they anticipate uh, reducing the rate of interest that is injecting more money in the economy uh, will increase, uh, will lead to inflationary pressure in the economy. Another area Areas of a disagreement is the dividend payments from the RBI to the government. Uh, government has been asking for uh, more dividends, but uh, RBI is uh, resistant. Similarly, uh, in the case of prompt corrective action, RBI has recently uh, increased in the scope of prompt corrective actions. Uh, it has many uh, public sector banks are under the radar of the RBI, and where sometimes uh, government has been objecting to it. Similarly, the reserve, especially the cash reserves with the the central bank, uh, sometimes uh, the government has been eyeing the surplus reserve, arguing that most other central banks are not sitting on this kind of cash pile. However, RBI is unwilling to let go this Kaikiti as it is, this is an important tool to manage exchange rate risk as well as to ensure that uh, banking crisis, in case there is banking crisis or bank failure, uh, the central bank can use, RBI can use this fund. Uh, to uh, for it uh, in order to um, save the uh, banking system, in order to rescue the banking system. So, in this session, uh, overall, uh, we have discussed the independence, uh, what are the case for and against independence, and we have reviewed uh, some countries, the independence of some of the central banks uh, in the globe, across the globe. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and uh, we will see uh, in the next session. Thank you.